Thank you. So opposite to the previous speaker, I won't start my presentations by showing sexy product because if I will start showing product, you will get to sleep. So you won't see any products from what we, we are doing. So lean marketing, this is about now in 20 minutes sharing about 20 years of experience about how to improve processes within sales, product management, marketing. And this is a challenge I have. And to do that, I need to be efficient because all this presentation is how you can get more efficient with what you are doing. So, but before going too deep into details, I will start by presenting two business cases, two business cases which are uh, real. The first one was in uh, 2008. If you remember what happened, September 15, 2008, a very famous American bank went bankrupt. And that was the starting point for the economic crisis. And after that, we've got and order book reductions, which was tremendous. Overnight, all our order books were deleted, basically. So we had to face a challenge. And the challenge was, what can we do to recover sales or to save what we had to, to, to save? So what was done was the following. In two days, I had two persons in my team who created over 25 different campaigns and they were implemented within the next following 30 days in 16 different countries and for 14 different brands. So that was a way to react. The outcome of this was the following. So in the first month, we recovered 1 million of Swedish kroners uh, sales. In three months, we recovered 6 million of sales. And if you had a look to the product we are manufacturing. They are very low value product, which means this amount of money is a lot of parts that we need to produce, that people get job on the machines to, to do. And out of this, we did that at zero cost, no extra added cost, only with the people which, which were working in the team. But we were not adding any cost. So that was purely uh, uh, some benefits. The second business case is about this challenge where we had to increase our digital presence internationally uh, with new website using the current infrastructure. No, so not investing in new systems or new CMS and to do that with our current resources. So at, uh, the outcome was that in a 12 month period, we managed to produce 26 micro websites. So now I have some questions to, to you. Is how many persons work in my work team to produce those 24, uh, 26 micro websites? Do you have any ideas? More. Who tells more or less? One. Two persons. Or well, actually one and a half, because one person is working part-time, but numbers of heads, too. So what is the average time to put a website online from the decisions that it's online? Any guesses? Ten weeks. Ten weeks? Six weeks. And what is the average cost to create a micro-website in euros? Any guesses? 2,000. <laughs> we, we were ending at 5,540 euros per website. So that was the outcome of those persons. And why did we manage to, de uh, to do that? It's because we were th thinking lean. And what is lean? Lean is actually coming from uh, Japan, where Toyota was one of the predecessors of introducing the lean philosophy. But lean, this is into the industrial world when you move material, information, people, but you move that, uh, those things with a purpose. 
because if you don't have a purpose to do that, what will happen is that you are creating waste. So you need to do things that are creating value, but also declare the war to waste. This is what Lean is about. And Lean is the uh, 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 different tools that you can apply. And you certainly heard about all those tools, like Six Sigmas. Uh, Six Sigma is a way to systematize what you are doing, where you can get some fact. You can, you already uh, or certainly heard about Muda, about Pokayoke. These are, all those terms are coming from the industries, but all those terms like Kaizen, like Kanban or 5S, all of those terms are really used within the industries. And if you think about this, if it works in the industry, why not applying this also in offices, in what you are doing, in marketing? Now I'm in charge of the marketing department and all this expertise I learned about the uh, previous year, I do apply that and uh, progressively. You don't need to be an expert in Six Sigma or in 5S, but just take the good part of it and apply that when it makes sense. And uh, one of the prerequisites to apply all of this is you need to know your uh, processes, your systems. So, uh, in the perfect world, so you should have one business and one system. And the business strategy, so the strategy the company is defining, needs to be closely linked to the operational strategy. And what do you have in the operational strategy from a company perspective? These are all those different uh, elements you, you can see below, and all of those could be different from company to company. But once you have the possibility to make a clear mapping about how your strategies are linked to uh, the different processes, then you have a much more clear picture how the things will work in your company. Now, if you break down this to marketing, what happened? You can make exactly the same things where you have your marketing strategy. Of course, this marketing strategy needs to follow the business strategy. And then you come into the operational marketing and all the operational marketing could be different from companies to company. But you see there is a lot of different things that applies to marketing, like all the mark tech with e-commerce, CMS, DAM, PIB, marketing automation, then the different functions. So all of this, if you know how those processes, those functions interact with each other, you have a very good starting point to start applying Lean. So the first uh, things to remember is understand all your company processes before you start doing some things. Because if you don't understand how the relations because between all your processes works, you can't start or you will fail. Now, why do you need to think lean? It's because, first of all, it <coughs> makes your life and others' life much more easier. And just as a proof, so now I won't show it, but here when you will get the slide, there is a link to a video to a film which is called Toast Kaizen. This film is 20 minutes. Take the time to look at this film. It's a film from uh, the end of the 80s, but it will be an eye-opener for all of you, I'm sure. So because you will see your life could be much more easy every day. The second thing is why you need to think lean. It's in terms of marketing, you need to be efficient because everybody needs to demonstrate that we are contributing to profit to the company. And this is one of the things that you certainly get also this pressure from your manager that show me the money. Where is the money? So this is a, a fact. So showing the money, what can you do to contribute to profit of the company? So very simple. The profit, it's the difference between the revenue and the cost you have. Now, if you put that in terms of what are you doing, what can you influence from a marketing perspective? So on the revenue uh, side, so you have your value propositions. What 
is making your customer buy your product. And here you can define that to what fits to your company. That could be from your, your branding, your brand equity, from your IP, so intellectual property, your product positioning, your product mix, how you work with all of this. So trade marketing, so all the campaign you are doing, all the different promotions. So all of this goes into the revenue side. Then on the cost side, of course, we have the people. We can't work without the people. So this is one part of the cost side that you can influence if you are working with the right tools. Because if you have the right tools, you need less people at the end because they are more efficient. And also you have the system. And all those systems, they cost you money if you have very poor data quality, if you have multiple data sources, if you have multiple systems, and on top of this, if your system doesn't communicate together. So all of this, what we want to do, this is, of course, get the revenue as much as possible, the cost as low as possible. And once you manage to get that, you need to multiply your success. So you can multiply your successes into geographical areas. You can multiply your successes with people to different areas. So this is a way how you can really influence the profit generation. So second takeaway, this is systematize your successes. Because once you find a way that work, just copy and paste. Don't reinvent the wheel. Now, if you look, remember the two business cases. The first one I was showing was talking about how to influence the revenue side. The second one, how to influence the cost side. So, which means that at the end, we have a focus on the mark tech because the mark tech is something that is on the left side. So all this system, you need to pay licenses. You need to pay a lot of attention to that. This costs a lot of money when you add all the invoices you got from that. On the revenue side, what can you do is working actively with your content, with your value propositions. This is what you can influence. And at the end, so you don't want to get this uh, view unbalanced. You want to make it turn the other way around. So the only way to change that is to integrate all your systems together. And this is where there is today very good possibility of integrating your CMS with your PIM, with your DAM, with your e-commerce. And I think here, this is certainly a vision or a dream for a lot of people, but this is definitively possible. The only things you need to, to think about when you do that, this is, first of all, it can work seamless. It's feasible, it's possible. Secondly, don't forget the big picture means how all your processes works together. Because as I was mentioning before, if your you don't know how your processes are working together, so you will fail integrating your systems. And also take one step at a time. Don't be too uh, in, in, in patience and experience also. The effect of applying this way of thinking, this is you will gain in effectiveness and speed. That will be the first uh, uh, gain. You will remove a lot of complexity because once you start deep diving into your processes, you will identify here, we can improve this and this. It will force you to communicate also with your colleagues to see okay, I'm doing this, but what about you? How is it influencing your daily work? You will get a better con uh, uh, control of all your costs because at the end, this is also really important. D don't forget the picture of the money. Your boss is looking, where is the money? So make it right from start. So uh, we've got some example that you can fail one, two, three times, but if you fail only once, so two of the time, that won't be a cost. That will be some extra revenue or extra time to focus on doing the right things. Uh, and also one thing which is really important, which is a soft uh, factor, this is the motivation of the people. Uh, people will get motivated using the system, working with the system, uh, because they will also understand the processes, the process owner, 
will feel much more comfortable with this. And this is really important because uh, one of the things we were not talking about in terms of waste, this is demotivated people. How much cost a person who is demotivated? So that's also some factors. So third takeaway, integrate your system and use all their functionality. Maybe not everything at once, but step by step. What are the biggest risks not to succeed with, with this? So the first one is your strategy and your visions. You may have a strategy, you may have a vision, but it's changing every six months, every year. So if you are working in a company with no clear strategy or changing too often, change company. <laughs> The operational strategy is not aligned with the business strategy, which is also really important. Because if someone pull you in one direction and you want to go into the other direction, automatically something is uh, wrong. Your processes, make sure that you have your processes in place. So Jonas was at the beginning, if I was counting correctly, mentioning the word process 12 times. So just in your speech. So process are really important that you understand your processes. And another factor which is really important, this is resistant to change because maybe you are the one who wants to implement the change. You, want, you are the one driving this, but you don't have your people with you. That will be a showstopper for sure. So you need to have the people with you on board and communicating don't think that it's because you send an email to your organization. Now we are implementing a DAM, that everybody will know what a DAM is. And I can tell you, communicate minimum eight times with the same topic again and again and again. Don't forget it. It's so important. And if you are too impatient, you want to run much more quicker than the one behind you. So uh, you need to wait for them. You need to show the way, but wait for them. So now I was telling I will not show any product, but maybe you wonder what Norma Group is all about. So Norma Group is a company about 9,000 uh, employees worldwide. We have over 120 years of history. Uh, with some roots in Sweden and Germany. We have over 30 plants in the world and uh, according to the latest annual report, we did 1.1 billion euro turnover last year. And you see here, this is a selection of the brands we have. We, ha we have about 15 different brands in the world. And if you really want to know what we do is just go on our website and see what we do. We have a brand new website and you should understand what we do. So if you have any questions, so you can send an email to me, French, Swedish, English works very, very well. And thank you very much.